Hello viewers, in this part of my video on principles of green chemistry, I will be discussing about the principle 6 of green chemistry. In this video, I will discuss about energy requirements for reactions, alternative source of energy and use of microwave and ultrasound energy. Uh, now first we will see what is principle 6 of green chemistry. This principle is about design for energy efficiency. It states that energy requirements should be recognized for their environmental and economic impacts and should be minimized. Synthetic methods should be conducted at ambient temperature and pressure. Now, let's first see what are the energy requirements of a reaction and why a reaction needs energy. Most chemical processes, they use thermal source of energy, which is originating from fossil or nuclear fuels. The traditionally used energy sources are coal, oil, gas. They are limited in supply and their combustion releases greenhouse gases. The energy input to the processes is not specific because it is not directly targeted at the chemical bond of the molecules undergoing reaction. Most of the energy that is delivered to the point of use is lost in conversion and transmission and much of the energy is wasted in heating up the reactors, heating solvents and even the general environment. So for continuous improvement of life quality both move towards renewable energy and design for energy efficiency are needed. So microwave radiations and ultrasound energy are the alternative source of energy which can be used to carry out a reaction. First, we will discuss microwave reactions and before that, let us see what are microwave radiations. Microwaves are a form of electromagnetic radiations and they lie between the infrared and radio waves. Their frequency is 300 megahertz to 300 gigahertz and wavelength is 1 meter to 1 millimeter. They are widely used in communication, remote sensing, navigation, food processing, electron paramagnetic resonance spectroscopy and for commercial and domestic heating. The domestic microwave uses a frequency of 2.45 GHz and it provides the right penetration depth for most samples and it is easily available. Now let's understand the microwave chemistry. Microwave chemistry is the science of applying microwave radiation to a chemical reaction. Microwaves are non-ionizing, so they do not alter the molecular structure of the reactants. They only provide thermal activation during a reaction. As electromagnetic radiation, they consist of both electric and magnetic field component. There is no interaction of the magnetic field during a reaction by microwave radiation. The energy of microwave is low and it is low enough to break up any chemical bond. Now, we will see the theory of microwave heating in a chemical reaction. There are two major mechanisms. One is the dipolar polarization and ionic conduction, which are involved in generating heat by a microwave radiation. Dipolar rotation and ionic conduction. In the dipolar rotation, the molecule rotates back and forth constantly, attempting to align itself with the dipole with the ever-oscillating electric field. The friction between each rotating molecule it results into generation of heat. While in ionic conduction, a free ion or ionic species it moves translationally through space, attempting to align with the changing electric field. Like in dipolar rotation, the friction between these moving species it results in generation of heat. So, in order for a molecule to able to generate heat when irradiated with microwaves. It must have a permanent dipole which will align with the oscillating field. The alignment will cause rotation which will result into friction between the molecules and is ultimately converted to heat. In the liquid and solid state, the molecules are not free to, to rotate independently and microwave radiation results in dielectric heating effect. Liquids which do not have a permanent dipole movement are not heated directly. Because of the large distance between the molecules of gases, they are also not heated by microwaves. In solids, the rotation is hindered because the dipoles are bound in crystal and cannot move as freely as in the liquid state. 
but this does not mean that reaction cannot be carried out in solid state. So to carry out a reaction in solid state, some thermally conducting material like silicon carbide is, can be used which is an excellent absorber of microwave and heat is uh, added as a transfer medium. Now let us have a comparison of conventional heating and microwave heating. In case of a conventional heating, the reaction vessel is heated from outside to the inside like in cooking. Whereas in the microwave, they couple directly with the molecule because the reaction vessels are generally transparent to microwaves. In a conventional heating, the internal temperature is usually significantly lower than the outside temperature which results in a temperature gradient in the reaction vessel and poor control over conditions. Mixing can help to overcome this problem, but thermal equilibrium can take a lot of time to attain. In case of microwave heating, um, the valve effects are minimized as the vessel wall is not directly heated. It results in a more rapid increase in temperature in the system and localized superheating will lead to dipolar polarization or ionic conduction. In conventional heating, the heat transfer is by conduction or convection. In case of microwave heating, it is through energetic coupling. The conventional heating is superficial heating. A microwave heating is, is coupling at the molecular rep level. Conventional heating is slow, whereas microwave heating is very rapid. Conventional heating is superficial and microwave heating is volumetric. Conventional heating is non-selective. It is independent of the properties of the material. Microwave heating is selective and it depends upon the properties of the material such as its dipole moment. So you can see the difference between conduction, conventional heating and microwave heating in diagram A and B. Here you can see the heat transfer is a conduct, conduction or convection. In case of microwave heating, there is localized superheating. The sample absorbs microwave energy and the vessel walls are transported to the microwave energy. In case of conventional energy, there is temperature distribution, there is temperature gradient, whereas microwave heating, the temperature gradient is not there and more rapid and uniform heating of the sample. So there are various advantages of carrying out a reaction in microwaves. That is the heat rate are fast, the overall reaction time can be shortened and the reaction has improved selectivity and high yield. Here we will see one example where microwave radiations are used to carry out a chemical reaction and this is the Hoffman elimination. The quaternary ammonium salt under microwave condition with water and chloroform as solvent, it undergoes beta elimination to give an alkene in within one minute. So here the poorly mixed two phases water and chloroform are used. The quaternary ammonium compound was water soluble and the microwave quickly heats the water to over 100 degrees Celsius and there is rapid elimination to give the product. The less pro polar product, it rapidly it is partitioned into the chloroform phase. So this is how reaction can be achieved within microwave and uh, no further separation is required as the product is partitioned into the chloroform phase. Another example is hydrolysis of benzamide. Benzamide can be hydrolyzed to benzoic acid. Under microwave condition, uh, the temperature is 140 degrees Celsius and the reaction takes place within 7 minutes and 99% yield. The conventional uh, method requires reflux and a time of over 1 hour and the yield is 90%. Uh, there are some reactions which do not require a solvent and some such solvent-free reactions are carried out using microwave. So in microwave, we can carry out solvent-free reactions as well. Although microwave radiation is a safe source of heating, the uncontrolled reaction conditions uh, which involve volatile reactants or solvent at high pressure may re result in undesirable results. So in solvent-free condition, the radiations are directly absorbed by the sol substrate and not by the solvents. Thus, the benefits of microwave radiations are increased in solvent-free conditions. So the benefits are it is clean, Efficient method, high yielding, short reaction time, safety in increase significantly, the workup is simplified considerably, the costs are reduced, large amount of reactants can be employed, the reactivity is enhanced and in some cases the selectivity is modified without dilution. Uh, some solvent-free reactions can be carried out in microwave. These are uh, 
the conversion of benzaldehyde to benzoic acid using microwave. Now, uh, let's see what type of reaction vessels can be used for carrying out microwave reactions. Microwaves, they have three characteristics that allow them to be used in cooking. For example, they are reflected by metal, they pass through glass, plastic, paper and ceramic and they are absorbed by food. So, because of these characteristics, they are also used for carrying out chemical reactions. So, my microwave reactions can be carried out in an open, open vessel like beaker or an Erlenmeyer flask and or they can be used in a carried out in a closed vessel. Microwave vessels are made up of microwave transparent materials like borosilicate glass, teflon, quartz, polystyrene or pyrex. Um, the microwaves which are used in kitchen are kitchen microwaves. They are produced, uh, the microwaves are produced inside the oven by an electron tube called magnetron. Chemists started to use these kitchen microscopes for microwaves for synthetic purpose in the mid 1980s. Uh, these domestic microwave ovens they have some problems due to the lack of safety control, which does not allow the use of flammable solvents in them. Because the exit power output is very difficult to regulate, temperature and pressure controls are not there, so it is very challenging to use these kitchen microwaves for uh, carrying out reactions. There is no protection and some from explosion and, and some runaway reaction can also take place. So due to the increased interest in this approach, uh, various companies like Anton Power, Biotase, Sem and Milestone, they develop monowave and multiwave microwave reactors for carrying out chemical reactions. So these type of microwaves are called dedicated reactors. The benefits of these microwaves to the synthetic um, synthesis uh, in these dedicated reactors are shown here. Here, in if the reaction is carried out in a dedicated reactor using microwave, we can achieve high reaction temperature, we can shorten the overall process of time, we can obtain higher yield and pure compounds, improve reproducibility, there is handling convenience, it improves the efficiency, um, there is possibility of stirring the reaction mixture, uh, the data recording can be done and safety under high pressure and temperature care is there if dedicated reactors are used. Now next type of uh, energy which is can be used for carrying out reaction is the ultrasound energy. So the use of ultrasounds or sound waves with frequency higher than that uh, which are detectable by the human ear that is uh, 18 kilohertz that is called uh, using these ultrasounds to carry out a reaction is called so sonochemistry. The chemical reactions are carried out between 20 to 100 kilohertz for, uh, uh, by ultrasound. So now we will see the theory of uh, carrying out a reaction using ultrasounds. So when a sound wave propagates by a series of compressions and rarefaction cycle through a liquid medium, it causes a molecule to oscillate around its mean position. During this compression cycle, the average distance between the molecules is reduced and conversely it is increased during the rarefaction cycle. Under appropriate conditions in the rarefaction cycle, the attractive forces of the molecule of the liquid may be overcome causing a bubble to form. If the internal force are great enough to cause collapse of these bubbles, very high local temperature and pressure may be created. These high temperature and pressure that is what initiates a chemical reaction. So this is how uh, chemical reactions can be carried out using ultrasound. The use of uh, power ultrasounds are various uses. If they can be used in the field of uh, plastic welding, cleaning, cutting, therapeutic. They have therapeutic medicinal uses, processing and in sonochemistry. Now we will see one example where ultrasound can be used and uh, this type of process is called sonochemical switching. Uh, these are the cases where a different pathway is followed in ultrasound to the thermal reaction. So you can see when the ultrasound is applied, the benzyl cyanide is produced. However, uh, when the ultrasound is not there, the product is a different product is obtained. So this type of reactions are called sonochemical switching. So the benzyl cyanide is formed using ultrasound. This is due to ultrasound forcing the cyanide onto the surface of alumina, thereby enhancing cyanide nucleophilicity and reducing the Lewis acid character of alumina. Next example is sonochemical Simon-Smith reaction. 
So, alkenes on reaction with methylene iodide in presence of zinc gives cyclopropane derivative. With ultrasound, the reaction is not exothermic and no iodine is used and it is, has 91% yield. But if ultrasounds are not used, the yields are less, 51%, there can be some exotherm and iodine has to be used. So various types of reaction can be carried out using ultrasound. These are oxidation reactions, radical reactions or synthesis of nanoparticles can be done using ultrasound. Some questions on this topic are, First question is, discuss the principle of ultrasound synthesis and its beneficial effect in Simon-Smith reaction. Next question is, discuss the beneficial points with microwave-assisted reaction in water. Another question is, what do you understand by alternative source of energy? Give example. Next question is, explain the principle of heat transfer in conventional method of heating and compare it with microwave-assisted reactions. Um, one more question is, why ultrasound is preferred over conventional energy source? The last question is, what are the disadvantages of thermal heating given one energy source which is greener? Some books which uh, can be referred to study green chemistry are shown here. Uh, these are my YouTube links on the topics introduction to green chemistry, principle 1 and 2 of green chemistry, principle 3 and 4 of green chemistry and uh, uh, principle 5 of green chemistry.